This is Keys to the Shop, Founder Friday edition. Today, we're talking with Adam Obradio of Industra Coffee in Brno, Czech Republic. Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Keys to the Shop, where we give you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. My name is Chris DiFirio. I'm your host for the show. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed to Keys to the Shop, I would highly encourage you to hit subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and also share these episodes with a friend or with your team or anyone who you think can really use the wisdom shared in these interviews and in these episodes as we talk about such a wide variety of topics that are relevant to the cafe experience. And if you love what Keys to the Shop does and it's helped you, I would really appreciate it if you would leave a five-star rating or even a review over on iTunes. It really helps the show's ranking and it gets it in front of more people. So thank you very much for doing that and to those of you who have already done that. I sincerely appreciate it. Now, this show is brought to you in part by Keys to the Shop Consulting. Uh, Keys to the Shop Consulting works with you whether you are a new coffee business wanting to get started on the right foot, avoid unnecessary mistakes, and really build a good foundation for the future, or you're an established coffee business and you want to uh, level up your operations and really just refine things, or maybe you're looking to scale your business. I mean, there's a lot of ways that Keys to the Shop Consulting can help you either remotely or in person, and I would love to talk with you about what that might look like for your business. To hop on a call with me and talk about that, just email me, chris at keys to the shop.com. That's C-H-R-I-S at keys to the shop.com. And I would love to figure out how Keys to the Shop Consulting can help you. Again, that email for Keys to the Shop Consulting, chris at keys to the shop.com. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Prima Coffee. Prima Coffee supplies you with awesome specialty coffee equipment, you know, uh, grinders, brewers, espresso machines, even things like undercounter refrigeration. Uh, you know, purchasing equipment can be a pretty scary thing, especially when you're on a budget and you want to make sure that you're getting the right equipment for the job. Um, so Prima Coffee kind of marries the best equipment with their service and helping you get the right equipment for your circumstance. That's why I love working with them because they're dedicated to making sure you're successful with specialty coffee. So when you go to this website, prima-coffee.com, slash keys, you can get 5% off your order at checkout by using the code keys five. That's 5% off your entire order. When you go to prima coffee.com slash keys and use the code keys five at checkout. And if you're in the market for commercial equipment, I really do think you should reach out to Prima coffee. They have a long history of doing amazing work for people just like you go visit them again over at prima coffee.com slash keys. Now, today's episode is also brought to you by the Pacific Barista Series. The Barista Series is a world leader in plant-based performance beverages. Pacific offers oat, soy, rice, coconut, almond, and hemp. And when they launch these things, you'll know that it will perform on bar because they've designed them for the specialty coffee barista, and they've had them tested by some of the world's best baristas before you can even buy them. So you know it's going to stand up to the heat from steaming, produce awesome texture for latte art, and keep the flavor balance focused on the coffee. Your customers that love plant-based options are going to love the barista series, and I would encourage you, get this in your store and try it for yourself. Go visit them at their website, pacificfoodservice.com. I definitely think if you're going to offer your customers the best plant-based specialty coffee experience, then you should be serving the Barista Series from Pacific. Okay, everybody. Well, today I have a really great Founder Friday for you. We're talking with the co-founder of Industra Coffee in Brno, Czech Republic, Adam Obratio. This coffee shop was founded by Adam and his partner Petra back in 2013. Both of them have a long history of working in the coffee industry, doing competitions. Petra herself is a three-time Czech Brewers' Cup champion and also plays sixth in the world. Industra is one of the foundational players in the coffee scene in the Czech Republic, founded in a time where everything was really just taking off and most people in the area were just used to the traditional Viennese-style uh, coffee bar culture. And so they were able to help establish a new way of uh, enjoying coffee, understanding coffee, and have been a cornerstone of the coffee community there ever since. Now, today in our conversation with Adam, we're going to be covering the history of um, how he got into coffee, how he and Petra 
founded Industra and the challenges that they faced starting that business, the great things they experienced as they built rapport in their community, and how the business has developed through the years since 2013 to today, and then what is in store past that. There are a lot of great insights that Adam gives us here. And as we hear about their history and how they run their business and their perspectives on coffee and service, I think you're really going to be encouraged by this. And and again, it was such a pleasure to talk to Adam. He's one of these people that you can talk to for a very long time about coffee or just about anything. So I know you're going to enjoy this. So let's get right to the conversation. Here now is my interview with the co-founder of Industra Coffee, Adam Obratio. Well, Adam, really pleased to have you at Keys to the Shop. How are you today? I'm good here. Thank you, Chris. Uh, it's good to, uh, good to be here with you. Thank you. Yeah, so I've heard a lot of great things about what you're doing with Industra, and um, I'm excited to dive into the history of your shop and, and what you're doing there in Brno. Um, mm-hmm. you have been around since 2013 and, but I, I have a feeling you were in coffee before that. And I, I want to start, of course, with these Founder Friday episodes. I'd love to know, tell us how you personally got into coffee and how that led you to starting a, a shop. So in between two universities i kind of uh ended up one and before before the other started i had like a a spare time um which i wanted to do something with and so i i've decided to uh, go to london and uh you know find a job just for let's say half a year you know, my, my dad uh, uh, drinks coffee. Uh, I wasn't really drinking coffee at all uh, at that time. And my, my friend who worked in London before, uh, she, she worked for uh, Starbucks. She said, it's, uh, it's good fun. It's good money. Uh, I should just give it a, give it a try. And uh, I, I went to London, you know, walked, walked around with my CV. Uh, and then I ended up at uh, Costa, which is uh, Starbucks's biggest competitor. Um, and I think it's, it's bigger than Starbucks on the UK market, uh, or maybe it used to be. Um, and I, I, I chose Costa because they had a real porta filters uh, for their coffee machines. Oh. Because, you know, at Starbucks, there is this su- super automatic. And uh, that was good fun. Uh, I wasn't really drinking coffee there, and uh, at that time, um, I wasn't really quick at the machine as well. And so, what what where I kind of found my place was at the tail during the the morning rushes. Uh, we would be kind of uh, a pairs of you know someone on the on the tail and then the other person on the machine, um, and. The person on the machine was usually uh, our shop manager. Uh, we, we used to work at Liverpool Street Station. And I was just, you know, I just got into the, the speed. I enjoyed the bus, the queues, you know, because it was pretty busy train station every morning. Um, so I enjoyed the, the bus, the, the people, like the service industry. It, it was actually my first hospitality job. And uh, during that uh, when I when I was in London and working for Costa, uh, I've actually read a, a Czech foodie uh, article about the best cafes of London, and so I visited uh, Taylor Street baristas at New Street, which was just across the street from a Liverpool Street Station. I visited Manmouth. I visited uh, Flat White. And a few other, you know, leading one of the first specialty coffee shops, Caffeine, of course, Caffeine, uh, first few shops uh, in London. And I kind of fell in love with not just the coffee, you know, I was drinking flat whites and piccolos at, the, at that time. Uh, but, you know, the, the latte art and the cool music, I remember very clearly that they were playing uh, hot chips over and over <laughs> and and the the technical side of things because i was always uh, drawn to to technical stuff computers and uh, and uh, pub, public uh, audio like I, I used to work in a club before and uh, 
so the technical side, like the grinders and the Cineso machines, that was really like, that was cool to look at. And then, you know, the guys at, at Caffeine uh, invited me behind the machine to see the, the naked Porta filter. Uh, you know, I was like, oh, I was amazed. Right. And so that kind of drew me into coffee. And then I I'm, I'm went back to study and uh, I wanted to, to have a part time in a cafe in Brno, which, you know, that was hard at the time because it was very few of those cafes and they weren't very busy at the time. Um, and so I ended up going back to London and actually working for Taylor Street Baristas for, uh, for one and a half year. Uh, so, yeah, and that was, that was a very, very uh, steep learning curve uh, where, you know, I've learned so much and uh, I've experienced so much. Right. Yeah, well, it seems so. That's really amazing. So much, such a rich experience. And a lot of people just continue their um, a journey into working for more and more shops. And eventually you got all of this experience and, um, it became just part of, you know, how you, uh, were as a person, like it's sunk into your bones and it spurred you on to open your own shop at some point. I mean, what was it that made you want to take the direction of becoming an owner rather than, you know, just per continuing to pursue the profession of coffee? Oh, uh, well, uh, so so it kind of felt like uh, continuing the profession. I think uh, at the time, we didn't really realize uh, what it is to uh, own a cafe and how different it is to be a cafe owner compared to being a barista. But we've decided with my partner Petra to leave London because it was so busy. The, the, the shifts were, uh, you know, super busy hundreds of drinks a day um, and uh, it kind of felt like the, the learning curve kind of plateaued um, for us and uh, London never really felt like home because it's so busy everyone just comes in stays for a year and then leaves you know uh, we I, I worked at, at Taylor Street Baristas for one and a half year and at the time I was leaving, I was one of the oldest, uh, you know, baristas, not oh, wow. speaking about the management, but, you know, as a barista, uh, I was in, in the group of like very few uh, people who, who would be there for such a long time. So um, that kind of made us feel like we want to return to Czech Republic. And uh, there were a few options, you know, Prague. And even that was 2013, it seemed like too busy. And maybe we didn't have the ambition to, to open in Prague. And uh, I knew Brno, which is second biggest town in, in Czech Republic. And uh, I knew it because I studied here. I, I had my auntie here. So uh, we decided to open a cafe here. And uh, in the beginning, it was really just like, uh, we love making coffees and we will be making coffee in, in Brno as good as we can because we really felt and I think we really did bring that um, London quality and London attention to detail and London style to the Czech scene, you know. At that time that you opened, um, what was the Czech scene like? I mean, it, it seems like you're saying that that was kind of a new thing for them. Was there much it, going on? It was. It was pretty new. Like there were a few shops. I think if I said it, it was three shops in, in Brno with specialty coffee and then there were few in Prague. You know, uh, the, the scene at the time, yeah, it, it was in at the beginning. Uh, it, was, it was good in the way that everyone knew each other, uh, which reminded London in 2010 when I wasn't there, but I've heard stories, you know, that people would just... Uh, take shifts for for their friends at their cafes when they got sick so uh you know that the community really was very tight and very small that's great um i think czech republic as a, as a whole in a cafe kind of culture it, it was uh influenced by the viennese uh, coffee drinking so you know staying for long having a cake with that and you know, those kind of hipster uh, cafes with 
a quick service and order at the bar that was very new to to Czech Republic. So um, it it took some time to uh, really make a variety of different styles and different cafes in in Czech. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, I think it was good times. That's really cool that you have that history though too, because that's. Obviously, that Viennese coffee culture is one of the first coffee house cultures that the world, you know, was introduced to, um, and mm-hmm. so, in in a sense, it's not like you're replacing it; you're accentuating or evolving it by by coming in with your coffee shop or your expression of a coffee shop. And I mean, it does sound like it would be something that appeals to mostly young people. There might be some yeah. people that that were the older generation that like that older style that you might have won over. I mean, when you started this, I mean, what was the reception to what you were bringing into that community? Well, I think it was it was good reception because uh, because we, we were something new and, and progressive. And, uh, you know, it took a, it took years before we got busy. And, uh, you know, by any means, we're we're the, the busiest shop in in Brno uh, at all you know we are kind of we're placed uh, kind of off city center so you really have to make a journey to visit us um, there is a bicycle path around here there is a river so it's it's we do get most people over weekends and uh, and the best time for us is when the weather is is nice um, but uh yeah so so we felt like we will you know the audience would be uh young hipsters and uh, and people who really like uh, great quality food and great quality um uh, drinking which i think they're still visiting us but uh then we realized that we have much broader uh, audience and then uh, maybe the youngest people aren't really our customers and we get uh, loads of young parents. We do get people about uh, around uh, in their, you know, 50s. We do have few regulars uh, in their late 60s who come in for, uh, you know, two espressos and a bag of coffee for, for their espresso machine. So it's uh, <laughs> like we, we've never dreamt of having such a, such a wide and... Uh, and a uh, very diverse audience. Did you start with a wide offering uh, food and beverage? I mean, to describe exactly how you, or what the mm. concept was when you first started. Yeah, so, so um, this wide offering, that would actually be kind of traditional in, in a, mm, let's say, common cafe in, in Czech Republic when we opened. So, Every cafe would also serve as a bar in the evening with cheap wine and uh, beer on top, and uh, every every spirit and uh, and vermouth you can imagine. Um, so it was kind of like half cafe, but also a bar in the evening, which you know makes sense from the financial perspective. But the, there weren't really those cafes that close at five o'clock in the evening, and you know they just get busy with coffee. And uh, we were actually very, very coffee focused uh, because that's what that's what we knew from uh, London. And, you know, we saw cafes which only had coffees, uh, hot chocolate, maybe two teas and then apple juice. And we wanted to bring this experience where it's really just coffee centered. Um, We baked our cakes since day one. you know the our our popular banana bread recipe is is the recipe that Petra used to bake in at Proofrock in London, um, and we knew we we'd like to do uh, branches on weekends because that wasn't really a thing in Czech Republic when we opened, and the only breakfast you could get in the cafe would be uh, sausages uh, and uh, and uh, fried eggs so we really wanted to do this brunch culture uh and i think we can it wouldn't be an an overstatement if we said that we kind of brought brunch into into burnout 
Ooh, that, that's a really great yeah. little campaign slogan right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, out. I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to make it sound, uh, you know, too, uh, too big. But I think that there weren't a place in in Brno for a good brunch. So you don't do the, or do you do the um, uh, wine and beer and at, at night thing? Are you st- still today? Uh, so we coffee. so we close so we close at uh, seven uh, p.m. Mm-hmm. So we're not really we don't have beer on top, uh, but because we're part of a bigger thing, we are Industra Coffee. But Industra as a whole is a event space. It's a place where you can uh, come for to see a gallery exhibition. Uh, it's a place where you can come and see theater play, and. Uh, because there is so many people coming in, uh, not for the cafe, but we're kind of like the side business of this uh, of this whole building. Uh, then we kind of had to have a have a bottled beer, and we got a, a very nice wine as well. Um, but there was really a circumstance of uh, of the other activities that uh, happen in house. When you, when you say in house and part of a larger thing, is that something that you own or you're a part of? We are part of, uh, okay. and we are yeah, and we are happy to do to to be part of it, uh, and we are happy that there is more people taking care of it because it's it's <laughs> it's a, such a big project. <laughs> so uh, when you started, I'm, I want to take a step back. You mentioned early on how. You didn't really anticipate how different it would be to be owners of a business. What is it specifically as you were starting the coffee shop and the challenges that you had in any of the processes of building out or business planning and things like that? What what were the things that really made you realize that this is quite a different animal? So the biggest thing was that like we weren't thinking as business people. Uh, we were two baristas who... Uh, wanted to make their job, you know, to create their own job. So uh, we never really planned to have uh, employees. We've never really uh, thought of, you know, having holiday. Um, and we uh, we kind of just, you know, have this idea that we have some savings. We will spend them on the machine and the grinders and we will just make great coffee. And... Uh, you know that is not how you can how you can do a permanent cafe. You know, if it was a pop up for a few months or or maybe a year, uh, that would be totally per- perfect, I guess. Um, but if you want to create a sustainable business, we then had to realize that uh, you know we also have to hire people and uh, and train them. Partly just step back behind the from behind the bar and. Uh, do some administration and and stuff like that. That so, uh, so that was I think the biggest lesson, and uh, it got you know it got more and more um, pronounced as we uh, also got our uh, little uh, daughter Nora. Uh, you know when Petra really needed to step out, and then I I needed to uh, take over her responsibilities. Uh, partly and so uh you know i I really wasn't able to do uh, bar shifts anymore Mm -hmm. and i i barely do these days and uh, it feels great because then you can think of uh you know what can we do next and what the future holds and how can we uh expand or how can we uh you know improve and and create uh more exciting um business to work for and uh and yeah well that's really a good point because you've if you're working bar shifts all the time your energy is spent and Mm. it's nice when life kind of forces you to make a decision that's a good decision later on like having a daughter just forces you to delegate even more than you were yeah 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 um and uh you know in the beginning of industrial coffee it was really it was I don't want to say slow, but it wasn't as busy. Uh, so, 
you know, Petra would bake cakes uh, when we actually had a shift together. So she would only uh, jump behind the, the bar when I needed uh, her help. And we would be two of us uh, serving a few customers. But then suddenly when it got quiet, uh, one of us could, could do uh, the ordering, you know, and numbers and, and counting and stuff like that. So we really, uh, you know, had the time, but as the, as the cafe gets busier and, uh, you know, it, it should be a pretty busy place, you know, with coffees, as there is no big profit on a cup of coffee sold, uh, you need to sell quite a few to, to make a sustainable business. So we kind of realized that we need to push a little bit and, uh, and serve more coffees and, and get busier. Um, so, but what, what made you realize that? I mean, because you came from London where it was super busy and earlier mm -hmm. in the conversation, you're saying, well, it's part of the reason you wanted to leave is because it was so busy and it was so hard to do all those, those shifts. And now that you're an owner, I mean, it, and it was slow and you could have these kind of luxurious times, I guess, uh, where you would work together and bake cakes and do this, all this stuff. I mean, uh -huh. at what point did you realize that, you know, escaping the busyness of the cafe isn't necessarily something that you can do? Was it just looking at the books one day, realizing like, hey, we actually need some of that busyness? By any means, we are as busy as we used to be in London. And, uh, you know, with Taylor Street Baristas, there were shops at Canary Wharf in financial district uh, where there would be uh, more than a thousand cups served every day on two coffee machines <laughs> so it was it would be one person on shots uh, another person on milk uh, same thing on the other machine and then fifth person would be kind of bar back slash batch brew and preparing you know soy milks and uh, hot chocolates and that is crazy busy you know like you every day you you come home from from work and you're like you feel like you've been swimming for two, two hours. You're like <laughs> exhausted uh, physically, but mentally, you know, I, I never felt bad mentally. I, I, it was fun for me. Um, but, but, you know, just physically it, it, it was tiring. And so in, 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 at the industry, you know, if, if the record number of, uh, of cups sold is maybe, you know, 250 or 300 during an event you know when there was a, a very popular and, and successful market with uh, with a small brands i think we may have made 300 coffees and that felt really really busy uh, but uh, by any means we're making a, a huge number of drinks so looking at it from the, like perspective from today um, we should have used our potential uh, years back from now. Uh, but what made us realize that a few, few years ago, I don't know, maybe it was just getting a, a little busier and busier over time. And we got our first employees and, uh, and it was very good fun to expand the team. And they were all very close. And I think they all are uh, even still. I think it's, about 10 part-timers uh, with us these days. So, uh, so yeah. When you started to pull away from bar shifts and made the decision to do more delegation, um, obviously there's organization that has to go along with that. I mean, what responsibilities did you give yourselves? Like what things did you, you take on and what things did Petra take on? And what were the, what was the thinking behind that? Well, so we just, and I, I'm not sure if we're good at uh, delegating uh, still, you know, we just uh, try to create an uh, environment where it's nice to work at. And then uh, the day-to-day -day operation, uh, you know, serving customers, making drinks, preparing our own ginger beer and uh, baking the cakes, that's just being made by, by our great uh, employees. And we just do the things around. We try to um, think uh, what to improve and uh, what the next steps would be. And, you know, 
do the, the unusual, unexpected problem solving uh, if there are problems in along the way. But yeah, most of the day-to-day operation that's just being done by, by uh, people who work with us. Okay, so obviously you have to lean on your people pretty well. What, what goes into selecting employees and, and has that changed over the years? So I think we, we were very lucky with, uh, with our reputation because I think with that reputation, uh, people who apply for a job here uh, with us kind of, I don't want to say they, they always know what they want, but, uh, you know, if they're not really serious about working in coffee and if they're not really uh, passionate about coffee, I, I don't think there would be... Uh, there would be um, able to apply or um, so I think that really creates a, a good good preposition for us uh, because you know very passionate and very skilled and hospitality focused or, or customer focused people uh, apply to to work with us so that is great um, and we always try to uh, employ people who uh, just love people and we believe that if they like coffee at least uh, you know it's it's a great job for them um, if they like to learn coffee making uh, you know we always allow that we never hire people who who we would say you're, you're gonna stay on the floor forever and you're never gonna be allowed behind the coffee machine right, right. but in some cases um a few people are just not as interested in uh, going behind the machine and they just love and love uh, being on the floor. Um, and again, you know, it could also be uh, because they're part-timers, they, they study their university and they work with us, let's say, three, three weekends in the month, you know? So it's not like uh, you get bored and uh, uh, on the floor, I believe that, you know, if they were doing uh, five days a week with us, it would be much harder to to find uh, the happiness uh, when when actually uh, being at the same position uh, all the time. Well, well, how do you structure the service at your space? I mean, you're, you're talking about. Uh, being on the floor and somebody who is not interested in making coffee, it doesn't sound like you have them make coffee. Uh, you don't have to make coffee. Okay, so what yeah. are they doing? Well, uh, we do table service, which is oh, pretty, okay. uh, uh, which is pretty common in Czech cafes. That's actually, I, I do believe, you know, if if there was a American slash uh, London uh, coffee culture, that would be quite a lot of order here pick up here um, but we wanted to to have table service a because we felt like uh, it it works well with the quality of coffee you know like someone comes to you brings you uh, a glass of water and uh, offers you know what's on the filter menu um, if you'd like a piece of cake and then we also believe that it uh, makes a, a bigger spending per head, per customer, if you just try to upsell something um, at the table, you know? But yeah, by, by any means, we're, we're serving hundreds of customers a day, so we can't do that. Okay, so now when you're hiring, you, you are hiring for two different positions, essentially, not just for uh, working in your so cafe. It, so everyone starts with uh, with floor and everyone starts with um, dishes and I don't want to say it's you know dishes but it's you know just being being in the at work and kind of seeing how things work how we treat customers kind you know like you don't you it takes a few few days maybe a few weeks before you you know all the all the items on the menu and and you're kind of allowed to go and serve tables um so you do bag bar you do uh dishes and then you spend maybe a month maybe more than that maybe three months uh on the floor um 
and again it's it's mostly weekends when we actually also need the most of uh people at one shift which is like four or five um and then if you like uh, we teach you how to make a hand brewed coffee and then eventually you would uh, get to coffee machine but we also say and that's something um, that we mentioned at the interviews you know during like since since day one uh, we taste coffees with you we we give you to try you know the the bad extracted espressos and the best extracted espressos and we do uh, cupping from uh, here and there and we do give you different filter coffees so you uh, learn by tasting and then you learn the techniques on how to prepare such a beverage you know and then you and learn how to actually manipulate the variables to make the coffee as good as it can be uh, but we do really believe that that the tasting is um, the key to then become someone who stands behind the coffee machine so by the sound of it it it, it sounds like you know you've got you're letting the staff choose their path of where they're going to be past the you know floor and dishes if they want to be a barista they can choose that um i mean how do you guarantee that you're always going to have staff that choose uh being a barista well i think it, you know we we let them choose to make them happy uh and to uh keep their excitement uh, because you know if if you're excited about giving a great service then you will find that uh that fulfillment uh, on the shop floor and uh, if you're excited about coffee and coffee brewing and coffee uh, technique and coffee tasting then you can you know dive deep into that um, and uh, I think there is always uh, you know we've never had issues that there wouldn't be enough baristas uh, in in the cafe like we always have I, I think most of the people we do have in the team right now could just step uh, behind the machine and, and uh, you know, make high quality drinks. So it's not like there is a, a huge number of, of people who uh, just want to do um, table service, but some of them do and we, and we don't blame them. Uh, and we're happy uh, because, you know, we're, we're happy that they're happy. Right. Right. That makes sense. Um, you know, going back to the idea of attracting more professionally minded people is that a function of your reputation in terms of you know coming from london or you learned and bringing this concept or approach to coffee and that just word gets around and or, or how much of it is also i know that you both you and petra are uh, had been or are currently involved in competitions which also it brings a lot of reputable um you know, talk around your coffee shop. I mean, what was, what do you think it is that attracts them to your shop that makes them think that this is the place you work when you're serious about coffee? Well, I think it's a, it's a combination of uh, everything. In the beginning, uh, we were the, the guys who came from London, you know, so I think in the beginning it, it could have helped, but uh, quite early after we opened uh, Industra, Petra wo won the Czech Brewers Cup in uh, in 2015, and then uh, got to the finals on at, at the World uh, Brewers Cup. Um, ended up sixth, so uh, so that really helped with uh, reputation. It helped with uh, with uh, PR, um, and so. The, the I think it, the wheel just got spinning. Uh, my competing, you know, I've never really won. And I think uh, quite often whoever is second or third uh, will never get the, the uh, publicity that you get when you win. So sure. uh, I've always been someone who tries uh, persistently. I, I've competed many, many times. I think it's like five times, maybe more than that. Yeah, and then also like we were always trying to keep the keep the offering kind of simple-ish. 
uh, but we always uh, made the customer, uh, you know, to to come back to provide a great service consistently. You know, great great coffee consistently, uh, smiles, trying to to just give people uh, or provide good times. You know, and at first I think we were a little arrogant uh, because we opened the cafe and we we felt like. Uh, uh, sugar shouldn't be added to your precious <laughs> right. cu- cup of coffee. Uh, but then, you know, after a few years, we realized that no one ever came in because we don't offer sugar. So uh, we just we just started to kind of get to to people, kind of like uh, try to to meet them where they are, and then maybe uh, one day, you know, uh, provide them with a coffee that is so so good that they don't even need sugar or if they need it they can just have it and uh, it's the way they love it and we love to have them and and uh, we are very happy that they came in so that perspective changed as well you know changing your mind about something like that is is such a it's a classic story i think a lot of us go through that phase where we the purity of our approach and our ideals to coffee sort of are what fuels us, but then it, does, it sometimes it's what gets in our way as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. So you you develop some flexibility as an operator and owner, and in the last few years, I feel like that flexibility must have been something that has helped you in navigating a couple of challenges that all well one that mostly European coffee shops going through with Brexit. I mean, you have, mm. you know, that that's a challenge that we were talking about off the uh, recording here. But then also yeah. with uh, COVID on, on top of that, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about how your business has been experiencing those things because your your model depends on the experience. And these are things that really kind of throw a wrench into that. So yeah. how has this been for you? So, so the first wave, let's call it, which which came in uh, mid March, twenty twenty, uh, that was, you know, everyone was very scared and uh, and everyone was really afraid of of even getting COVID, and uh, we saw huge support from uh, from our customers. Um, what we did. In the in the beginning, uh, we were only just delivering uh, uh, coffee bags, retail bags from our friends, Czech roasteries, and uh, we were just filming uh, a brew guide uh, for for our uh, loved <laughs> customers. And uh, then you know it, it was taking a few months, and the weather got nicer. Uh, in spring so we decided to open only for takeaway and uh, yeah it was it was okay uh, some days we would do uh, the the usual number that we did uh, when the things were totally normal some days you know especially if, if, if it's if the weather is not so great then it would be quite quiet but um, the customers were very excited about going out for coffee and uh, and having experiencing this you know i've made this for you um, in spring because the weather was so great and we really saw a a big support from their side then for a few months um yeah and actually yeah that was actually the time when we really realized that um, it's not just a cup of coffee that we we're selling. It's it's the place, it's the atmosphere, it's the service. You know, because even though people were told to keep a distance and not to hang around too much, you know, there would be there would be groups right in front of the door, and and people would like to chat, and it really felt like we we're creating community. We we're creating a, a place for strangers to to just meet each other and and uh and chat about what they do and uh that was like you know amazing but at the same time quite frustrating because uh you know we couldn't do that and then summer was very nice and it was actually one of our busiest summers uh because usually you know 
all the people would go out of out of town uh but i think um you know much less people left country for their summer holiday and also uh some people uh, were traveling and visiting brno within czech republic so we actually had a very busy summer during autumn and winter uh we would only be allowed to have a have a takeaway window and you know again we're still seeing a great uh support from our customers but it it just gets a little tiring and uh and what is frustrating is that we don't really know when this thing will end and when the things will you know come to a new normal let's call it um but right now you know the, the team of people who we had jobs for you know big part of them is, is just studying full time and they're not really having that many shifts few of them we we haven't seen for months because they're you know keeping distance and also they're they're working somewhere else so that is very sad about the the whole covid situation um but i always say we're happy that we don't uh, own a bar, pub or bar because you know they they do m- most of them do have a uh, zero incomes so financially you know we will survive but the team i think is is experiencing uh, a strong hit and uh, i'm hoping to see everyone in uh, in a reopened cafe but it could happen that you know some of the members might not even come back i don't know i like what you said where you pointed out that it's not just coffee that you're selling it's the experience and how mm. the support of your community is just proof of how you've been able to serve them over the years it's a yeah. kind of a story and we're it, hearing from a lot a lot of people actually yeah and it's and it's amazing to realize it's also like very eye opening because in the beginning we we really felt that we are going to be serving the 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 best cups of coffee that will make you come in you know like we 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 really felt like what well, like the the unique selling point would be the quality of the cup but it's it's not that and i'm not sure if you can really uh achieve that in coffee you know there are no like fine dining fine drinking cafes um people you know just like those cafes for for different reasons and the coffee quality is you know partially important but it it, it seems to me that it's never going to be the the number one uh thing that you would you know and then, and we often say like if you if one cafe had a amazing coffee but you know very average service or average quality coffee and amazing service where would you go like it's it makes sense yeah that makes a lot of sense i feel like um especially i think your point about coffee fine dining i mean that usually well, if you don't want to make money that's what you <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you could pull that off and someone's going to be out there being, thinking, well, it's, I'm going to be the one to do it and you should email me because I would like to see that. But um mm-hmm. but yeah, I I I really appreciate your approach to um how you're serving your community even in the midst of, you know, this hardship it, and um you know having the emphasis on people's happiness and serving people well and not relying completely on your competition reputation or your pedigree from your you know being in london it sounds like your focus is really heavy heavy on just the relationships and doing what you can in the moment to make your staff happy and and make your customers happy yeah but it it took some time to realize right and i think i think that arrogance uh also came from our our youth uh because we were what 23 when we opened uh, industra coffee so uh so you know it it's been it's been 8 years it's uh industra coffee is my it's part of my i don't know it's part of my life for what uh a quarter of my life is that is that possible yeah <laughs> that is amazing you know so 
so during that, uh, I think I think we've just made a progress in uh, what we believe in and what we think is important. And uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe not not sure if I should mention this, but uh, you know, Rosie uh, Jeremy Challenger's wife. Uh, Jeremy Challenger was one of the owner uh, owners of. Proof Rock Coffee, where uh, Petra worked, and Rosie would uh, help Petra in uh, in uh, baking and cooking when she worked at uh, Proof Rock's kitchen in the beginning before she was making coffee. And Rosie would uh, come in and she would make jokes that it's just a hot beverage. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and sometimes we, you know, sometimes we forget that and. Uh, and sometimes we laugh at that, at that, and you know we know it, she wasn't like that serious about it. She understands the, the quality, but uh, yeah, I, maybe we shouldn't take it too seriously. Right, and a lot of people do feel that if they don't take it too seriously, then they won't take it seriously at all, or so they overcorrect to being mm. so serious that people just don't want to be around them. It's almost as if you do need some time to get all of the energy and snobby energy out. And then if, as you get older and you see a little bit more of the industry and it becomes a yeah. part of your life, you become a little bit more mature and you can see, hey, it is, it's just coffee. It's just a hot beverage. Sure. Uh, it's actually sure. the people that we're, we're working with here. Yeah, but I, I don't think uh, anyone could uh, could teach us this lesson other than ourselves mm. you know i think there there would be no shortcut but who knows you know <laughs> I, I don't know i don't know if if there are you know if there are 20 year old people uh for people who are listening and they're like ah, oh, no i'm just gonna brew geishas no sugar no milk uh i don't know if you're listening just just uh reach out <laughs> yeah yeah, it would be, that would be fun. It would be good to, <laughs> and like you said, I, I like what you said. Like you, ha you have to make that decision for yourself. You have to almost experience it yourself. And, yeah, yeah. No yeah. customer, you know, no customer, no parents wouldn't help. Like no one. Speaking about hospitality, you know, uh, sometimes we we remind our staff uh, that they can imagine like having uh, having guests at their home. Uh, if, if your auntie came to visit you in Brno or if your grandparents came to visit you in Brno, you know, if they come to your place uh, and you just try to, to make them feel very nice uh, at your, at your, uh, in your living room, you know, you, you brew them coffee and uh, if they ask for cream, right, if you have it, you're not going to say no, like, it, it, mm -hmm. you know, like you just, you just try to, to, and and of course you're not gonna be running to a shop because they've asked for for biscuits and you don't ha you don't have any. But uh, if you can uh, make them feel as good as they as they can or as they like, uh, then you know why not to do it. That's a fantastic point, and there is no reason not to do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's the answer. Yeah. Um, yeah. What would you say to um, other? owners or people who want to start coffee bars, specifically European uh, coffee entrepreneurs who I, I know because Europe has such a strong history in coffee shops, as you mentioned in the beginning, you know, people are going to want to do something similar to what you did. I'm going to bring good coffee to my city, you know, mm -hmm. and or I am doing that currently. And I'm maybe in year three in the timeline of where Industra has been what would you encourage them to focus on and some advice that would you think help them? So, so if you're right in the, in the beginning, uh, and this is a thing Colin Harmon in his great book, uh, what I know about running coffee shops mentioned as well. If you're right at the beginning, I think it's a good idea to go and work for someone at least, you know, for some time, like uh, just seeing uh, how, how things are done, maybe even if you don't hundred percent agree with uh, with something, like you're gonna have a great opportunity to create your own opinion. You know, so when we were leaving London, we worked for for uh, great companies, 
And we had a feeling that we can do a few things better uh, or differently at least. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's a great idea if you're right at the beginning of, beginning of your journey. Um, if you're um, three years in, uh, just keep yourself excited, motivated. How to do that? Uh, well, I think there are plenty and plenty of resources to just follow and learn new stuff and try new stuff and uh, get better at, at things. I've listened to your um, to your podcast with G and B Coffee uh, with the guys. And I really loved the part that uh, when they say, I think it was, it was Charles Babinski who said uh, that when you're in business, um, you know, you can do whatever you want uh, to make yourself happy. You know, you can, you can just uh, do business in, in a way that you enjoy it. And that is, that is magical, I think. Uh, and that no employment... Uh, can give you you know and it it's got it's got cons but um, this is just a magical thing and uh, maybe what you know sometimes we we do uh, we do teach uh, coffee brewing classes sometimes we do have uh, clients from cafes or roasteries and uh, I think it's not a bad idea to invite someone uh, for such a thing, even when you feel like everything is perfect, because having someone uh, with their, uh, you know, fresh view on things, fresh perspective, uh, could really open your eyes in, in some things, and uh, it can really help you to mo- move forward or meet and, uh, and talk with people who are in the industry, uh, share your challenges and maybe you know even if they don't have a solution they can just say oh we do this this way and you'd be like oh well I can try this or you know you come with your own solution but uh, just uh, being open to stuff and then also what we like to do is travel and visit you know coffee places around Europe which is much harder these days but just seeing you know what they what they do, how they do it, uh, what works, what doesn't work. Yeah. That's all really good advice and, and really underscores the importance of community communication and um, being being humble in your approach to mm. everything as well. So that's, I, I mm. love what you're saying there. Um, what is next for Industra? What's on the horizon uh, for you all in the coming years? Ah, uh, so... So it was during uh, coronavirus, um, I think mid 2020, when we, together with our uh, two friends, uh, were thinking about starting roasting coffee. And we really uh, weren't uh, looking into roasting before because we always felt like it's super difficult and it's very hard to do well. And we felt that maybe also because we're you know we we've tasted hundreds maybe thousands of coffees and uh, more often than than not we're not very happy about them or we're not 100 percent happy about them and so we felt like this is due to roasting being super hard and so we thought that after all the time that we were saying no uh, we're not gonna do it uh we felt like we should just give it a try. Uh, and also we feel like uh, it's, a, it's a great time. It's a good way to move our brand and, uh, and start uh, this new project, side project. You know, we can, uh, I, I do believe we can create uh, employment for, you know, our, our great team if they, if they like to uh, you know, go uh, in the in the coffee professional career. Um, I feel more excited about coffee than I felt, you know, last year or two. Right now, because I'm I'm just very very curious and very uh, very much looking forward to to just like learning so much new stuff. Um, 
so yeah, I think this is uh, this is gonna be something that we will pursue now uh, as uh, as industrial coffee. That's amazing. I can't wait to see that. And congratulations. That's going to be such uh, well, an adventure. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we, we don't have a, we don't have a strong uh, or a strict timeline uh, as we're trying to see and, and make things work. And, you know, some few things uh, depend on the others. So we don't know if it's going to be mid 2021 or, or, you know, autumn, but uh, we're hoping to, to do it this year for sure. Excellent. Um, Adam, this has really been a great time. I'm, I'm glad to have this conversation with you. So many great things you shared. Um, how can people stay in touch with you and what's going on at Industra? Well, I think the best channel would be uh, Instagram, uh, where it's just Industra Coffee um, or, or Facebook. Um, if you... Um, and that is actually something uh, that uh, GNB Coffee guys mentioned as well. Like if you're uh, if you're cafe owner or or young barista professional, uh, uh, just give us a shout if you have uh, ideas or questions or or um, you know if you want to say hi uh, because it's it's so good. You know if someone asks. Uh, on our experience, we are always happy to share because, uh, as as the guys from GNB have uh, said, like people are happy to help. I think. Yeah, that is my experience as well. So one hundred percent agree, uh, Adam. It's really mm -hmm. been awesome. Thank you for sharing. Well, thanks for uh, having me, and and uh, all the best to you and your show. Well, I hope that you enjoy that interview with Adam. Obviously, they're still doing wonderful things in Brno, and I can't wait for their new adventures in roasting. And I know, as a bit of more news, that uh, as of this recording, they are switching locations to a brand new location, which apparently is going to be larger than this one that they've been established in since 2013. So um, 2021 for Industria, it's a year of changes. And given what we know about how they approach business and life and coffee, it's all going to be really fantastic. So a huge thank you to Adam for joining us on the show. We really appreciate the work you do at Industria and the wisdom that you shared with us in this conversation. Now, if you want to learn more about Industria Coffee, you can go to their website, Industria Coffee dot cz for czech republic so it's industriacoffee.cz or you can follow them on instagram which i recommend you do over at industra coffee just one word industra coffee now if you have any questions comments or feedback for me you can simply email those to chris at keys to the shop dot com and i absolutely would love to hear from you that's also the email you can use to inquire about keys to the shop consulting for you and your business again that's chris at keys to the shop dot com and with that, that is the end of our episode today. Thank you so much, everybody. I, I so appreciate you listening to the show. Lots of great episodes coming up, and I hope you have a good week. And as always, I hope that this episode has truly given you keys to the shop. Keys to the shop.